here at the bench I've got the motor side of the scraper uh, here and here is the articulating head of it for those of you who might be interested um, you've basically uh, you've got this rod here uh, that the uh, scraper shoe rides in uh, this is the linear part of the motion the receiving end of it and that fits onto this pin here this pin is connected to an arm obviously and this mechanism on the inside here is basically uh, a swash plate uh, I'm not going to go ahead and take the whole thing apart because it's a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, this video but just a brief overview a swash plate is the same thing that makes an articulating rotor head on a helicopter work it's basically a disc uh, that has uh, followers on on both sides uh, one follower is influenced by the socket head cap screw here and the other follower is what is on the uh, is connected to this arm here so basically what happens is is that uh, with this swash perfectly 90 degrees the swash plate 90 degrees um, when you turn this on and it it revolves uh, there's zero displacement of any of the associated elements uh, as you go ahead and influence the socket head uh, cap screw, either turning it to the cl uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, what you do is introduce uh, an offset um, onto the swash plate so that as it turns around, it, uh, it constantly now rocks back and forth. That rocking back and forth motion is then translated uh, into the arm here and I think you can kind of see it if I bring you in close enough let's see if we can't do this I'll go ahead and try to turn this thing by holding it still and I think you can kind of see that arm go back and forth so basically uh, the swash is what uh, goes ahead and converts the rotary uh, the rotary motion into linear motion here at the end which is ultimately uh, going whoop, sorry about that going straight to the uh, to the scraper head so we're going to go ahead and uh, put some uh, some grease on this rod we're going to put it into the scraper head and then reassemble uh, the whole thing so let me get that over to the bench and uh, we'll concentrate on that all right here's the scraper head uh, I've gone ahead and put the ways on and uh, the reason why I did that is because I had to uh, I did have to shim them uh, I only took about uh, uh, 10 thousandths off total between the top sides of the ways here and the underside of the shoe to clean the whole thing up so uh, that was probably a little bit more than what the slop and the holes uh, uh, gave me so I had to actually bring up the uh, the base of the ways about seven thousandths and uh, how I did that was uh, basically I just put the rod through Let's see if I can get this thing oriented right so that it makes sense there we go and uh, what I did was I went ahead and put this shoe how does it go? I think like this on it and then I just kind of uh, kind of rocked it back and forth and you can see it's got a little bit of play. There was much more, so I went in with a feeler, uh, feeler gauge and uh, found out uh, basically how much uh, distance I got from both sides. Um, this side is actually bottomed out, so this side kind of gives you a total error. Um, split that in half and then rows both sides of the ways up with uh, some shim stock. So uh, those are in there. I think I've got just about the amount of play that I need. Uh, to make this thing uh, work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, some grease on this now. And let's get some uh, some grease here. What I have to do first is connect it to the motor housing so that uh, this all goes in at the same time. So let me get that over here. And I think what I'll do is I'll put some, uh, 
some grease on this as well. Slather, holy smokes. Gets over everything. Put that back in. All right. This will go. Probably I'll put some grease on that too, eh? That goes there. And then this will. do is we'll put our lock washers on. These are a little cramped for space. Get our bolts out of the top of the head here. These are kind of tough to get in, so I'm going to go ahead and fasten these uh, off camera, and then we'll uh, we'll get back to putting the uh, the scraper blade uh, shoe on. All right. Now. Before I attach anything else, I'm going to plug this in. Alright, that seems to be working. Seems to be working. I'll unplug it. Because this, like any other power tool, if you're going to do some work on the uh, on the power transmitting side of the head, you want to go ahead and unplug that just in case uh, something accidentally turns on. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, the shoe on, and uh, that is going to require a little bit of oil <clears throat> and a uh, screwdriver. Now on the base of this uh, shoe, as you can see here, there's a groove uh, for oil. You basically uh, just tip it on its side and run a drop of oil into that, and that should lubricate the, uh, the ways as this thing slides back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, a zoom spout here and go ahead and apply some oil. Get that in here. Come on. Really? There we go. Probably way more than I need, but I can always rub it off. All right, what we'll do is we'll place this on top, just like that. Got a couple of uh, slotted head screws. We'll drop inside.
we're really looking forward to getting this thing finished up. It's been on the bench uh, since I took the scraping class last May. And I'm looking forward to getting back into that and really doing some useful uh, useful scraping of some straight edges and getting some machine repair that's been much needed here at the shop done. So uh, sock down on those two. All right, now <clears throat> we've got the other end of the shoe, uh, which basically uh, this will uh, will go in this way. And what they've provided was, let me see if I get you a little bit closer here, was a little rubber uh, bushing that goes in here. And I was able to pick up a new one since the one that came with the machine was really wore out, which you just saw. And this is going to go on like so. There's kind of a wedge in there. And uh, the wedge compensates for some of the angle. And, oh. do is get that down in there. Alright, you can kind of see the wedge inside there. Um, gives you a bit of a buffer uh, when you're scraping. And we'll just sock down on this right here. Doesn't have to be particularly tight. The only thing that I did lose uh, on this was the uh, was the stroke adjustment scale on the side. Uh, those uh, those screws that held that thing in. I forgot what they call those drive uh, drive pins. Uh, just were not coming out. So I'll have to uh, I don't know maybe use some cyanoacrylate or something and and stick that back on there. It would be kind of nice <clears throat> to have that. But uh, this thing is uh, is ready to go. And what you'll end up doing is uh, on the underside here is you're basically taking a look through these two holes here. You kind of keep rotating the head around until that socket head cap screw comes around and then you're basically just turning and affecting that swash that we talked about and varying your stroke length. Well it seems to work. We've got very little side to side play here. I think just enough to keep this thing uh, working the way that it should. The only thing I have left to do is put the hand strap on and we'll call it uh, finished. I look forward to trying it out on some ductile iron that I got from MSC and start making my uh, my straight edges. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining me through this uh, four-part series. I hope you found it useful or at least uh, interesting on how these things work. Thanks for joining me in the shop today. Take care guys. We'll see you in the next video.